can be shocking when we are confronted with someone that has the opposite political view than we do. And it's sad to see how many relationships have departed because of that. In this video, I'm going to share with you four insights to help you navigate those political differences. And I do this not from a political position. I'm doing this from the purpose of promoting civility. Because I do believe and I've experienced when you can have productive conversations around differences, there is so much potential for great relationships and great answers coming out of them. And I never lose my hope and trust that people can do that. I'm Karen Belensic and I have been studying, teaching, and writing about conflict mastery for the last three decades. And I find it to be a fascinating study. My book, Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace, goes into greater detail around the concepts that I teach. So as you listen to these insights, I encourage you to wait all the way to the end because each insight has its own specific thing. And actually the last insight is something that I use quite frequently and it works like a charm. The first insight is be quiet. That might surprise if you know me because I like engagement, but particularly in your work environment, really bad form to be bringing up political conversations. And especially if your work has designated that as off bounds. So respect that. Also, pay attention to signals people give you. Because if you pay attention, you'll know whether there's an opening to have a conversation or not. I have several colleagues that when I'm around them and anything political comes up, they go very silent. And to me, that's their signal. I don't want to go there. And people may even say, no politics, I don't want to talk politics. Respect that. It's really important to respect that. Now, another time to be quiet, I think, unless you are an artist at conflict, is when somebody emotionally attacks you around a political stance. And that is a time when somebody is really emotionally charged is not a time to try to have a reasonable conversation. Get out of the way, don't engage. Now there are ways to diffuse that and shift it, but in this short video, I'm not gonna go into that. Insight number two. If you are going to try to change somebody's mind and their position, you will fail 99% of the time <laughs> because you're trying to change them. And so people can feel that. It's, it's written all over you that you think they're wrong and they need to change to be okay. And so when we push people, what happens is they push back. They dig in their heels even deeper. So if you go about, you can do that overtly by telling somebody, I cannot believe that you believe that or that you like that person. Those are ways of really creating a bigger barrier and a more healed in position for the other person. So it's actually defeating your purpose. And that goes with any type of conflict or difference. So people don't like to be pushed. You can also push people in a very covert way too, where it's very passive aggressive and in innuendo, then that doesn't work either. If you have an intent to try to change somebody's position, you will fail if that's the tack that you take. Insight number three. If you can get yourself in a very sincere state, I call it centered state, where you are sincerely curious to learn about the other person's perspective and how they came to it, that's a beautiful thing. And so what you want to do, now this is specific too, what you want to do is ask open-ended questions. How, when, where, tell me more about that. You want to avoid asking them why, because people tend to get a little defensive if you ask them why they have that position. So good idea just to avoid that. 
Now there's a couple other keys here. Do not be tempted to change the conversation to how you see it. And there's a temptation that's there. I encourage you to just listen, ask more questions, so you feel like you really understand where they're coming from. Don't start sharing yours unless one of two things happens. If they say, well, how do you see it? Or if you say, would you like to hear my perspective? And you have permission to share. I think it's really important. A lot of times we think that if we are listening and we're not disagreeing, that it means that we agree. And that is not true. When we listen and we don't agree, a good thing to say is, thank you for sharing and I see it differently. And so, so you're not attacking them, you're just acknowledging the fact that you appreciate knowing where they're coming from and you, um, you see it differently. And they may ask you, well, tell me, about, tell me about how you see it. Insight number four. This is something I rely on a lot. I pick one or two issues that are important to me. Now you could pick more, but I pick one or two issues that are the most important things to me. And I do my research. I, I'm, and I do my research so that I know that I am accurate and correct. There is so much misinformation. I don't listen to everybody that's giving their opinion. I do my research. And a lot of times that research isn't on one of the networks, the cable networks. I like to go to Snoops, look and research there, S-N-O-P-E-S dot -E com. They've been around for a long time and they research those things and they'll give you the background. Do good research. So you might say, well, so, so what? But what I find is if I'm in a political conversation or one that could be a political conversation, I can say what's really important to me in this election is this. I've done my homework and I have some data that is factual and I know where it came from. I don't want to be in a situation where there's something going on and then I'm trying to interject and I don't really know my sources. Because again, there is so much misinformation and so many people with an opinion that they're spouting out that that you don't want to take to the bank unless you know it's really true. It's, it's not counterfeit information. Those are my four insights. I would love to know what you think, what has worked for you. You might be sitting there saying, I don't give a crap about these people that are different than me. Why should I do that? And that's your prerogative. I would like to live in a world in which we have civility and we can respect each other. And I also know the more I can respect and understand somebody else, the more opportunity there is for us to create and innovate together as we go into the future. You might want to enjoy my next video that I'll put right here. And it's about the five different ways that I've observed that people, they believe and they have desire around how they navigate conflict. Not your normal five things, and I think you'll find it interesting. Thank you for listening in, and until next time, bye-bye.